So this is the Dragon Dress DX version, a 1.1 take by Skytube. The kit looks nice. Um, the body poses very well. Emphasis on the body, not the head, the body. The design is minimalistic, but still relatively striking. The main thing that grabs my attention is the thing that grabs everybody's attention. This uh, arm cannon dragon thing. However, it has flaws. This is probably what I would call a tell me I'm pretty model kit because it looks nice. It's nice to look at. Two sentences that mean the same thing. Um, however, it's not nice to touch and it's definitely not nice to try and move. Um, main example being... The head comes off. Way too easy. Um, and that is definitely not a problem with the design of the body. That is a this kit problem. And allow me to show you why. Here is Lady Ludens, a kit created by Kotobukiya, uh, part of a cross-promotion with... Kojima Studios for his game Death Stranding. Say what you want about the game, I like this design of this kit. Here is a Megami device kit. Again, created by Kotobukiya, but the neck and shoulder joints are a lot similar to this thing, and it also does not have the same problem. Now you're probably already thinking, well those two kits don't have nearly as much going on, and they also have a smaller stand. So maybe it has something to do with that. All right, fine. Here is, ooh, here is this figure. Uh, this is a figure, not a model kit, but it is the same body already pre-built. This thing is, Got enough going on that, as you just saw, the stand has a hard time keeping this thing up. And it does not have the problem. Now, I, I could be here all day. I could swap out that heavy stand onto a smaller figure. I could put this kit on a smaller stand. I could take everything's stands off and just pick them up by themselves, by their heads. But the point of the argument still stands. This connection is weak! And I guess since we're on stands, I should air my grievances about this stand. It is... Alright. It holds the figure up fine. Just fine. The points are... Solid. And... It is a nice stand. Um... It's nice. It's a freestand. The bottom part is probably the most impressive part because it is two separate pieces and it has these slots on the sides for you to expand and interconnect it so that as this company comes out with more model kits, it's easy to make a diorama. That is probably the stand's best attribute. Another positive I'll give this kit is the faces. While the head does not stay on, the faces are very emotive and very well done. You can see a nice blush, you can see the sort of teary eyes, the mouth has been painted, and these faces, again, are nice and emotive. Very uh, lively, you could probably get some good poses out of it. Um, I'm not going to pose this thing. It also comes with a trident, that has an alternate mode where you take these two pieces off, lower this section down, and it becomes, I believe, a giant crossbow. Um, again, really nice idea. This part does not click on. Again, very nitpicky, but if this slides around too easily, it's probably not going to hold a pose for too long, especially not like a downward one because now there is a way to lock it. Um, I don't fully understand.
understand how to lock it. It said something about making sure this piece is at an angle with the rest of it. Um, and I guess that's it. That's it right there. Uh, the argument's nullified. It's a good piece. Well, anyways, let's get on to the part that I've been kind of dreading. Moving it. The legs have hip poseability. Very nice, very fluid. Hip armor does not get in the way. And a nice fluid knee bend. The ankle also has good posability, even has a toe bend. However, this piece, as I'm sure you can tell, is very, very loose, kind of just hanging on there. Um, not really an argument. It's not a structural piece, but it does make the kit noisy to pose, which for some people, completely fine. Some kits are just creaky and poppy. This kit, while posing it, is predominantly very silent, so you notice it. These knee pad wings have joint there, joint there, and a joint there. It's not a ratchet joint, it's just a peg, but my copy has this sort of pop lock spot. Um, not really a complaint, uh, that's a sturdy enough joint, and it pops into two good spots, straight out and back. The arms have a shoulder pivot right up there. This also happens. Okay, so the arms have an elbow. There's some wrist posability somewhere in there. There it is. There's some wrist posability. You can turn that to get side to side, and it has this joint. Uh, as you saw, the... Mm, this thing's very finicky. As you saw, this joint comes out a little too easily. It holds tighter than the head does, but not tight enough. Um, that's the only real ball joints outside of the body that have an issue. So it's something to do with how they design their ball joints. Oh, and also if you move the arm forward too much and you're not having it in a proper spot, you can either do that, or this piece comes off. Um, this piece comes off easily for a specific reason. There's actually two separate chest pieces that you can place on here. One gives the illusion of a bra under this, but it comes off too easily. Um, it hasn't happened yet on video, but multiple times while posing this thing, I have just knocked this completely off. Her dragon cannon has an up jaw, bottom jaw, the tongue can, the head can come off, the tongue can extend, and the tongue can come off. Okay, so this is another small argument that I have. The head is pegged on via this peg, which is the peg holding the tongue on. So this piece is kind of sandwiched between two pieces, the tongue and that piece. This has held in there, not by a peg in that, but by this thing that came off, which sandwiches underneath this and onto that. It's sturdy enough, so long as you don't try to pull on the tongue. The head also has a pivot while it's attached. It can move up and down. The body part can pivot this way, and then it also has some up and down as well, and then the back is pivot, pivot, and then a second pivot. So the back is the most dynamic posing part of the arm cannon, which makes sense because that's where you would place it first to then place everything else to get a somewhat good pose. I would recommend gluing that peg into that socket um, and moving it until the glue sets so that the head does not come off. Um, if you have the DX version, that does make it a little weird to exchange off this piece because there's an alternate uh, piece that I'm not going to show you. Um, but depending on who you are, you're probably either going to use the tongue exclusively or the other piece exclusively. So just glue on whichever one you want. Uh, outside of that, this armor piece can 
uh, extend out and fold uh, for an alternate form where she's supposed to be writing this thing, which I am not going to create on screen for multiple reasons. One of them being these pieces. Just by putting them on, I have created very not nice stress marks. Um, you can also tell that as I was building this, I got tired of building it and I stopped caring about the nice cuts because that's just a thing I do. When I don't like a kit, I just start snipping it off. Um, I'll clean this up for my own purposes. Probably going to reincorporate this into something else other than that kit. Because um, it's still nice. It's just flawed. And then the head is on a ball joint. And the neck itself has a pivot there. Which, if the head stays on, you can get some good back and forth and some nice tilts. Um, but the hair comes in conflict with this back uh, piece. So you have to have the chest forward a bit to allow for full head posability, which is a nice compromise, I suppose. Another flaw that I've yet to address is the black part on the leg, specifically the seam right here. The art indicates that this is supposed to be a stocking of some sort, so it's supposed to be smooth and circular. The seam here creates a very visible sort of edge that you can hear. Well, you can hear when that's silent. Um... So you'll have to round that off if you want the legs to be nice and smooth and round. You could say that it's an armor plate of some sort, but the art indicates that it is supposed to be stockings. If you aren't brave enough to actually try and pose this thing and get it into a nice standing pose or something emotive, she also comes with some extra hands. She comes with spread open hands, uh, gripping pointing hands, some relaxed open hands, and then trigger finger hands. But if you'll remember, her staff is nothing that requires a trigger. Again, small nitpick, but still something I need to point out. If you have the DX set, like I do, you get an extra set of hands. These hands. You get some thumbs up, Spider-Man hands, you get peace sign hands, and you get, I believe these are supposed to be either angled grip or heart hands. They could probably function as both, honestly. This kit is also considered non-scale by SkyTube. Non-scale basically means that it's not 1 12th, 1 48th, 1 4 4, 1 anything. Um, that has its ups and downs. A non-scale kit can look good, um, but accessorizing it becomes an issue. While I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb and say that these pegs are 3 millimeter pegs, which is the standard across most kits like this, if the hands are not a standard size, then accessorizing this with weapons or even just letting other kits hold this stuff is going to be problematic. But what scale might it be? Well, here it is standing next to a... 1 12th scale figure. Um, this is specifically the Synthetic Female by 1000 Toys. Uh, it's a little bigger than 1 12th. Granted, it is on a stand. So if we lift this up to where the bodies are the same, same body proportion, uh, longer arms, longer legs, bigger head. Here is Lady Ludens by Koto again. Much better in terms of scale. And then there it is with a 1 44th scale model kit. Also, for the sake of comparison, here it is with a 6 inch style figure. Um, pretty good. Probably could say it's in the same range. The hands definitely, however, are different sizes. So it's probably safe to say that while not officially in any scale, that this is 1 12th, uh, probably aligning more with the Kotobukiya model kit 112th than the 112th of the synthetic female. What's the difference? 
nothing really. The difference is the hands. These kits use smaller hands than some other figures, so one twelfth basically just means that they're all in the same scale factor. When they're all the same scale factor, though, then it still doesn't mean that they have the same size hands, because Koto makes sure that their kits, like Ludens, can grasp and hold, if not all of their kits' weapons, then the majority of them. But then you have companies like Bandai, who, just because they put their kits in the same scale, doesn't mean that all of their kits can hold all of the weapons. In fact, it's more common for older kits to have little to no compatibility without modification. But where does that put her? Um, like I said earlier, I'd wager she is 112th. I'd wager she is compatible with 112th uh, things from Kotobukiya. I would wager that she's not compatible with Bandai stuff of the same size without heavy modification. I'd also wager, unless you plan on making her a Dullahan model kit, you should probably modify that head in some way. I'm most likely just going to put simple blue tack on there to keep it there, because I don't plan on posing the head too much. Of course, having it headless doesn't necessarily have to be a flaw, it's just how easy it comes off is the flaw. Now, where the other model kits I've reviewed, I've just been kind of saying, here's what it does, here's what it doesn't do. I think I should probably rate this one, and it would have to be a 5 out of 10. Why 5 out of 10 when this kit has been mostly negative in the review? Um, well, I was able to put it together, I was able to pose it, and it does not explode. Uh, there are kits that will do that. Another reason why it's not lower than 5 is because... While the head comes off, yes, it's noisy to pose, yes, it's still enjoyable so long as you have fun with the knowledge that it is a flawed kit. However, what keeps it from being more than a 5 out of 10 is the amount of modifications I will have to make if I want to make this a kit that is fun to pose. Um, which for some, that's perfectly fine. You might enjoy modifying your kit to hell and back. This is a review of how the kit is straight out of box. So, 5 out of 10. Probably closer to a tell me I'm pretty out of 10.